In today's video, if you want to go from looking like this to looking like this, just like Armando did, how often should you be changing up your fitness routine? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rella from ProPhysique.com and today I got a video I want to talk to you about. It's a topic regarding what is the frequency with which you should be changing your goals, your fitness routine, your diet, your cardio. And it's a topic that comes from a great question that I got from right here on my Instagram direct message. So Armando sent me this along with some pictures, which always helps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the question to you guys, but you can see Armando looking like this here, looking like this here. So he's already done some great work. And this is part of the discussion that I want to get into you with you guys. But here's the question. I've been working out for over 25 years. I've always been in good shape. Over the last two years, I've really been kicking it up a notch with diet and fitness and able to get down to 10% body fat. Couldn't be happier at 44 years old. Despite all of that, I'm wanting to know if I should be changing up my fitness routine to ensure I'm being efficient with muscle growth and prevent injury as I'm getting older. Do you have any recommendations on how often I should be weight training on a weekly basis? One body part a week, two body parts a week, etc. I also want to thank you for your YouTube video health calculator really helped me with my journey. Well, so the big picture here, and this is something that a lot of us that have undergone these kind of transformations and changes, not only in fitness, but in life, is that we get to a goal that we set for ourselves and we immediately say, what's next? Okay, guys. And I think a lot of us assume that when we reach a physique that we set as our goal, we're going to get there and the work is done and we're going to be happy. I got bad news for you. The work is never done. Okay. We are always, and I think this is what makes human beings great, striving for what's next, right? So when you asked me that question, I had a flashback to like 15 years ago and I was in your same situation. I had been really consistent in the gym. I had been really pushing my body and I wanted to know what's next. Okay. I liked the way I look. I liked the way I felt, but I still felt like there was something more, right? I had some stuff that I wanted to like express and I didn't know how to do it. And then for me, it all worked out when I went to a bodybuilding show. I thought, that's it. My first bodybuilding show was 15 years ago, almost to the day, this month. And going to that first show a year prior set me up where I planned for an entire year to do a bodybuilding show. That exact show, in fact, the next year. What did that do? Well, I thought that my nutrition and my training was in high gear, but when I decided to do a bodybuilding show and I started looking at these competitors, I said, man, I'm going to put in the effort for an entire year. I literally changed around my daily routine, my habits, my lifestyle to fit in this category of bodybuilding. Now, does that mean that that's something that you should do? Absolutely not. Although you've made a lot of progress, you're asking questions like, how can you optimize training? I will say this just to touch on the frequency question for the first 10 to 15 years of my lifting career, I lifted a body part once a week and it was basically the old school 20 to 30 sets hit a body part so hard. You can't move for a few days. When I changed my lifting philosophy to hitting body parts twice a week with a little bit less volume per session, a little bit more intensity per session, it was almost like my body went through another metamorphosis of gains. Okay. For me, lifting a body part twice a week had an immediate impact on muscle size, muscle strength, and as you can guess, my enjoyment out of what I was doing. Because what a lot of us love about the sport of, you know, being fit and if you want to call it bodybuilding or body sculpting, whatever it is, it's that we get to witness our bodies changing. And over time, those changes become less and less because you're putting on more muscle. You have less body fat. Now, if you need some motivation and you don't know where to start, Guys, our 90 day transformation challenge is open. We are including nutrition plans. We are including training plans, including at work home, including things like vegan meal options. And we have an amazing support group. All 30 coaches for Pro Physique go in there. We do live videos every week. We answer your questions. And we are also offering discounted guided coaching for the length of this 90 day transformation challenge. Now it starts in July. For a lot of people, the deadline, the date, right? So I'll put some pictures here on the screen of our female champion, Drea, and also our female second champion. You see her here, Stephanie. I haven't done my interviews with the male winners yet, but you guys bet those are coming. But the real value in seeing all this is that when you give someone a fitness goal, a deadline, it makes it more tangible. And for me, deciding to do a bodybuilding competition was my first major fitness goal. However, that changed after I did my first couple bodybuilding shows. I thought I want to do something else. 
And then I got into another physique sport. Yeah, it's not based on how your physique looks, but it's more based on how you perform. I got into powerlifting. Well, why was that fun? Guys, I think we underestimate the value of novelty, right? It's not the destination that is the best part of the process. It's the actual journey that is the best part. When you are pushing yourself, challenging yourself, and you work towards a goal and you get to that goal, there is a huge letdown after you get to that goal. There is a, a sense of accomplishment and euphoria, but there's also this, I call it the post-show blues. I've had it with bodybuilding. I've had it with powerlifting. I was a competitive baseball player. I remember when my baseball season would end, I would have this period of kind of a lack of direction, a lack of focus, and it almost felt like a sense of depression because I didn't know what I should be doing with my time. And so these kind of ebbs and flows when it comes to your physique, and especially once you've done this amazing work, I think anyone would look at this picture right here of you and think, wow, if I could only look like that, I would be so happy. But they don't realize that you've done the work, you've got there, and although you're happy, you're still wondering what's next. Can you push yourself a little further? Can you stay healthier? Can you continue lifting into your 40s? Yes, all those things. You have to be smart with your body. So your question about how should you change your training over time, let's talk about the science of muscle building. Muscle building means we have to be increasing volume, intensity, and volume for our total workouts sets over time, right? You've got to do more work if you want your muscles to grow. But what about if you're just happy with your muscles where they're at? That doesn't take much work at all. Three to five sets a week per muscle group has shown to maintain muscle, right? Now, for depending on the type of athlete you are, it may kind of change a little bit. But I, as someone who's been lifting for 30 years, that's right, I started lifting weights when I was 17, I'm 47 now. I have noticed when I go through periods where I only go to the gym, you know, three to four days a week as opposed to five or six, there is no drop off in muscle. There might not be an appreciable gain in muscle, but I have noticed it is way easier for me to maintain a physique than it is to build it, okay? And science backs this up. You know, they've actually done some research studies. In fact, a lot of people worry if they miss a workout or miss a couple workouts, or maybe even they miss a whole week of workouts, that they're gonna lose muscle. The research actually shows that muscle does not atrophy for up to three weeks of no activity. Now, your muscles might change because you're not gonna be sore, right? So when your muscles are sore, they're fuller. You're also gonna probably release a little glycogen and water if you're not using them because your body says, hey, we don't need to store all this energy if we're not gonna use it. But the actual muscle, the actual strength does not even go anywhere for three weeks with complete, complete lack of stimulus. So if you are just staying active, you're gonna keep your muscle. The real difficulty is becoming, okay, I worked this hard to get here. What is the next step for me? This is why I suggest things like photo shoots, obviously bodybuilding competitions, or finding something that encourages you to have a physique that you really appreciate. Most of the people that have the physiques that we admire, people like bodybuilders, people like you know top-level CrossFitters, those physiques are a function of their daily routine. Their goal is often not to look a certain way, it's to perform, okay? So although I love the way I look, for me, what I like to focus on is, okay, I wanna make sure I'm getting good sets in the gym, I wanna make sure I'm setting PRs, I wanna make sure that I feel good, my cardiovascular health is good, and the result is a physique that I can be very proud of. However, I'm never satisfied. I'm always appreciative, but I'm always pushing for that next thing, and I think this is something that you have to recognize when you're starting a weight loss journey, a muscle building journey, is understand that you're never going to be satisfied. You're always going to be looking for the next thing. And if you do that, you can focus on saying, you know what's really the best part about this? Is the process, is the journey, is learning what foods work, is learning what lifestyle I can handle, is figuring out ways to solve the problem of how do I look better despite my schedule? Because for, let's be real, none of us are professional physique models, right? It is not my job to wake up in the morning and look like this. This is a byproduct of the things that I absolutely love, love to do. And that's why I like sharing this with you guys because as a father of three, business owner, coach, like competing and doing bodybuilding for me is very, very low on the totem pole. But again, it only takes a couple hours a week, guys. What I put in my mouth and the time that I spend at the gym is really what's gonna elicit a response. And that only takes a couple hours a week. It's not that hard, guys. I heard it said the other day, you know, we really, if we have a dog or we have a pet that needs to lose weight, what do we gotta do? Well, we make sure they stop stealing food off the counter. We make sure they go for more walks. And guess what happens? They change. When it comes to ourselves, however, 
We always want to look for these crazy things like, you know, sitting in a cold tub, uh, taking some new supplement. But if you just do the simple things, if you just treat yourself well, eat well, move more, you're going to see a change in your physique. So guys, I'm just going to finish this off by showing you guys our calculator. If you don't really have an idea where to start, this is where you can go. It's a free calculator. It's on our website. You can plug in some information and find out how many calories, how much protein, carbs, and fats you should be eating to build muscle, lose fat, lose fat rapidly. And it's going to help you along your way, but it's just a guideline. And my man Armando just did such a great job. And uh, I really appreciate getting feedback from this. Like you guys, let me know because a lot of these resources and tools are things that I provide because I know they're going to add value. But hearing about that value, hearing about the stories from our transformation challenge, if you haven't been watching those interviews, go check those out. We're here to help, guys. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.